Thanks everyone for being here. Uh, so to quickly introduce myself, I have a PhD in psychology and I'm specializing in child development. And I actually started to work at VTech some 10 years ago, uh, working on educational games for kids. I, uh, since then, I've been working at Chibisoft, LucasArts, and it's been now three years I've been working at Epic Games, developing new X uh, for the studio and working on AAA titles such as Paragon and Fortnite. So as a uh, specialist in child development and learning, who is now a game developer, I'm pretty excited to be here today. I'm sure that I do not need to emphasize that play is critical for a healthy development here at the Games for Teams Festival. Only recently have video games been recognized for the many potentially positive benefits they can provide to education. Video games have been in the limelight for a few decades now, and in today's world, everyone wants to create their own video games. Gamification is everywhere, and educational specialists are increasingly excited to use this medium. This acknowledgement reflects a still growing appeal for video games, and it's a huge market. Video game industry revenues soared in 2015. This industry generated more than $90 billion worldwide. However, what all these shiny numbers do not tell you is how ruthless, ruthless this industry actually is. That's right, uh, making games is hard. The competition for attention and engagement is fierce. With thousands of games out there, it has become very difficult to stand out. The video game industry is regularly hit with layoffs and closures. Promising AAA games fail, even those made by veteran teams with a huge development and marketing budget. The game industry, which is in the business of manufacturing fun, often struggles to hit its target. Commercial games are not necessarily fun. They can fail to engage or fail to retain long enough. I'm sorry to be the party pooper here a little bit, but here's an example from Warframe. So that's a game that is considered to be a successful free-to-play game. According to Steam Spy, we can see that 20% of the audience, people who chose to play the game for fun, are lost only one hour after only one hour of play. And remember, this is a successful game. Now imagine how it looks like uh, for a less successful game. And what about educational games? We'll have to compete with commercial <laughs> games. So just because we have few compelling examples of games that are highly engaging and fun to play, such as Minecraft, doesn't mean that all games are going to be fun and engaging, or even that it's likely. It's actually very hard to achieve that level of engagement, which is why many studios are now hiring people like me, people who have an understanding of how the brain learns and know about human psychology, people who are specialized in learning, to help them figure it out. This is how UX came to the video game industry. So the user experience entails how a person perceives, interact with a product, and the satisfaction and emotions elicited via this interaction. It takes its roots in cognitive psychology, human factors, and human computer interaction. Uh, UX also designates an umbrella discipline whose objective is to evaluate and improve the experience of the target user of a product in development. It includes UX design, interaction design, user research, UX strategy, et cetera. So UX has been around for decades now, uh, more commonly in industrial design and web design, uh, although this discipline is still very recently, um, very recent in the game industry. So why is this important? This is important because a game is designed on a basis of a designer's mental model, then implemented in a system that has specific constraints. The user, the players, they come with their own prior knowledge and expectation and then they develop a mental model about how they think the system works, and only based through their interaction with it. Therefore, the system image that part of the game with which uh, the player uh, will perceive and interact with has to convey the experience intended, or else it misses its goal. Note that UX is not about making the game easier. It's about removing the unwanted frustrations. It is all about making sure that your audience is going to experience the game the way you, as a designer, intended. So to ensure that a game will be successful, studios are increasingly using a UX framework to guide them. And I'm going to try to describe this framework as concisely as I can in just 10 minutes. Um, but this framework is about considering concepts such as usability, the ease of use, and what I like to call game flow, which is basically immersion or an, uh, an engagement of emotion and motivation. Usability refers to how the user understands the system and interacts with it. 
taking into account the human limits in perception, attention, and memory. Usability heuristics are guidelines that help identify and reduce the points of confusion or frustration that may occur and will occur uh, when interacting with the game. So now the list is long, but for example, is the game providing all the signs and feedback that will guide the player into understanding what to do? Are these signs clear, consistent? And what about the cognitive load? Are we not overwhelming the player at some point? Etc. cetera. So whereas the usability heuristics pertain to improving the ease of use of a video game, the game flow components is critical to ensuring that the game is enjoyable, engaging, immersive, fun, pick the term you prefer. It's about making sure the game is never too easy nor too hard, ensuring that the game elicits emotions and that it gives the player the motivation uh, to keep playing. But it's also about tweaking the learning curve and making sure that all that we teach has both context and meaning. So we are using these usability and get flow heuristics as guidelines, as a checklist of all the things to keep in mind when iterating on the designs. So I'm not gonna go through that, of course, it's way too long, but this is, this is the example of a checklist that we're using. And then we test. We have a fancy UX app at Epic Games, so you don't need much to test, actually. In fact, uh, I'm going to show you a video, and uh, what you're going to see in there is actually pretty cheap to do. You will see a player uh, from our UX lab playing in a work-in-progress version of Fortnite. Uh, Fortnite is our action-building game, it's still in alpha stage, uh, so it's still very early. And uh, you're going to see the player discovering um, when we're teaching them about the building mechanic. So in that video, you will see a red circle over there. This is eye tracking. This is actually a, a cheap eye tracking one. And most of the software that we're using are, are free. And you'll see the keyboard over there as well. So this is looking like this. I'm hoping you can see, actually. What a convenient opportunity to talk about our building system. Using your building system, you can quickly build and edit large structures, like stairs. We'll need stairs to continue. Get that treasure, Commander! So, so this is how we teach about building. Uh, we put the player in a meaningful situation. It has to get out of the pit. He or she, actually. It's a, it's a girl playing there. Uh, and you see a chest, so you're actually very motivated to get out of here. And we show how to do that in a moment that the player can do it. And that's it. And they get out of there. So this might seem trivial to you, but introducing the building mechanic in a meaningful way actually took a lot of iterations. And this is just an example of <laughs> one mechanic. We actually list all the things a player will have to learn prioritize them, and design what we call the onboarding plan. And it's pretty hard to accomplish. So this is the UX process we are working with uh, to help stay on track given our purposes. And the important thing that you have to remember is to always start with why. It's like Simon Sinek was uh, saying, start with why. Um, the reason why you want to do that is you want to find out what's the purpose. And not necessarily for you necessarily, but what is, what is this gonna mean for the experience of your audience? And then how are you gonna do that? What are the mechanics that you need to really focus on? And then the last thing is the what is the system image? What is the interactive elements the player is gonna play with? And at the end, you're gonna, after you go through your iteration, you're gonna test it and see with the player, like watching the players, are they actually getting to the purpose of it? Uh, is it meaningful to them? just by interacting with the system image. So whatever it is you need to teach the player, whether it's for educational or commercial game, a UX process and framework can help you out. Because ultimately, teaching educational content is not fundamentally different than teaching a game mechanic. In fact, we are using the same learning principles. So what about transfer? Um, whatever, uh, what the player will learn in the game will not necessarily transfer to new situations. And transfer of learning, the extension of what was learned to a new situation, is the ultimate goal for educators. So as if making a game wasn't hard enough, 
When you need players to learn something meaningful and transferable into new situations, you're adding a meta level of complexity. And this is what you uh, end up with. Your UX process needs to be applied outside of the game, and you have to start thinking about transfer first. So you can design an experience tailored to accomplish that goal, uh, which may or may not be a video game, but if it is, it has to be designed with that purpose in mind. So you can establish a UX process to guide your iterative design toward that goal. So again, here, start with why. What is your learning goals? And so what experience are you gonna design to make that happen? And then what are the mechanics uh, they're gonna use to teach these things? And then you test while well, during that process is your, uh, your audience actually really learning these things and are these things transferring uh, into new situations? So I realized I've only been scratching the surface in this big teaser presentation and I've actually um, been super fast in my talk so we can have a few, maybe a few minutes for um, um, questions. But feel free to connect with me and ask me your questions. I uh, have a blog where I explain all these things and how we do the UX uh, process at Epic Games. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it for me. Thank you so much for your attention. Yeah, um, so how do we test for transfer? That's an ex and a very good question, and I don't think we actually know that. I think that testing for transfer is actually a problem we have in, in traditional education, because we're using tests just to make sure that people have, have learned some things, but I'm, we're not really sure that this is really uh, the right thing to do. So it's, it's actually hard to figure that out, and I don't have the answer for it, but I think this is really what we need, we need to think about, and not just teaching about the content, but try to find a way to make sure that this is uh, gonna be applicable into new situations. So everything meta, um, if one of the, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Seymour Papert, is actually one who, yeah, I know, yeah, exciting. Um, he was, it was really interesting because it was not about how to use the computer to teach kids. It was about all about how to make sure kids, kids are gonna teach the computer to accomplish something. And so, you know, like Pia, Piaget and all this uh, learning principles, we can use it for transfer. And what was your second question? Uh, so we can gather multiple da data. The, what I show you is actually really the basic that we're doing and observation and you know, look how people uh, interact and what hurdles they're encountering is the most important ones. But then once the game is in alpha, we're collecting a ton of information through analytics and we can actually see and on the great scale of things uh, where people are stopping, where people are not doing the things that we expect them to do. So these two things are actually what, what we're looking into. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.